everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Tube, or welcome back. If this is your third Walker episode review, hope you're doing well. Um, you're wondering, where is my beautiful face with my cowboy hat? Well, so I recorded the review, and then I was reviewing the footage after I already disassembled my setup. And I figured out the microphone was not connected or it was just working. I don't know what happened to it, to be honest with you. So I'm now recording this ADR. So there's no footage. It's just the thumbnail um, over your screen right now. So sorry. I'll be back next week with hopefully my beautiful face. So let's get down to it. Let's talk about this. week. Also, before I mention, before going any th further, and I was really happy with that um with that review i was hyped i was so happy because we had just gotten renewed for season two that's right walker has been renewed for season two as well as it has been also confirmed to be receiving an additional five episodes in its first season run which i'm very excited for that means we get to have more time here to review even more episodes of walker so i'm very excited on that and also yeah we get to do more of this so yes we will be reviewing season two once that comes out in the future and we will also be now reviewing Walker to the end of episode 18. So, very good news. Just not good news on the original recording. So, again, apologies on that. So, I hope you bear with no visual movement this week. We'll be back to normal next week. But, um, anyway, let's get down to it. Um, this week on Walker. Um, I It's weird for me because I just reviewed this. So, um, it's so weird for me to talk about it again. And it's, and it's like, uh, it's not supposed to be. An, I'm not annoyed or anything. I'm just... <laughs> I really did enjoy this episode. I think um, with the last two episodes, definitely thinking um, you were being set up for like this kind of like mystery on like is Emily was Emily's death part of a larger thing. But in reality, it could just have been part of just like the beginning of just this is now this is the story of how uh, Walker will um, reunite his family and like move forward in this post Emily world. And um, so far, the show is now sticking with that guns and like just exploring walker as he's trying to figure everything out trying to you know um be, figure out what the what the next direction is for him in his life now that you know his wife is fully gone and there's nothing holding him back anymore so i really like that i think we got way more of mickey this week in terms of like their um development together as well as her just now vibing with the with the rest of the walker family um we get to see more of a little bit more of cordell's past which is always nice to get a little bit more backstory on every on, on your characters and um yeah, so let's get through the butchered recap and talk about this episode for me again. <laughs> I'm sorry, this this is just the beginning of many jokes of me repeating the fact that, yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm reviewing this again. <laughs> so we start off with a flashback. Um, this time a flashback not triggered by PTSD, but just a, a casual flashback of Walker learning how to ride stick from Emily with her very shiny, oh, so sexy red car. I love this car so much. It is awesome. Um, Cordell's having some difficulty trying to learn this. Emily's just, like, playing him along and, you know, just teasing him, like, oh, come on, you can't even ride a stick. Uh, Cordell manages to switch the situation over to... Um, them getting a beer and she said sure but you're driving and you know obviously Cordell suddenly starts learning how to drive stick fairly well the two are, are going very well and yeah they're having that nice banter for that kind of is cued via a bobblehead that Emily puts on the car for good luck and then we cut back to years late 17 years later so that was a 17 year time flashback or something um where Cordell and Mickey are in the middle of a stakeout and Although Mickey's like trying to be dead serious, I gotta focus on the job. And then Walker's like, "So what's your middle name? You know how to break out the icebreakers, don't you, Walker?" Um, it's all nice banter because Cordell wants to get to know Wal um, Mickey as a person since they're gonna be spending a lot of time together. Like they're gonna be friends at some point. You know, why not start now by getting to know each other even more? Um, and Mickey's kind of like a little bit like playing hard up a hard. Um, hardball to try and not answer all Walker's questions. But in reality, the the, the whole point of the um, stakeout tonight is to hunt down this, um, this, I forgot, this is a criminal named Toretto. And no, I'm not talking about Toretto from Fast and Furious. I'm not talking about them. Um, I'm talking about just a regular criminal named Toretto, um, who's in the middle of a male strip club, of all things. And we get a semi-magic -mike mic moment, which I swear to God, I thought I would never have to see male strippers on the show or on any TV show. 
so I was like, okay, fine. You know what? Um, <laughs> whatever. Um, he, um, the stripper warns, um, Toretto about the other two white, about the white house, i.e. the, um, the Texas Rangers outside. So he recommends to her to kind of like come out the back way so they can both escape together. Um, once Cordell and Mickey starts noticing all the other patrons are leaving, except for Toretto, they go inside, immediately get mistaken as a couple as one of the stripper attempts to do a um, threesome dance, which they immediately said no, hell to the no, which immediately destroys any chances of any sort of shipping going on. That's right. I know y'all. I know there's some shippers out there. It ain't happening. It ain't gonna happen. Um, they run back outside where they notice um, Mickey's car being t- taken away, which... I'm just saying, Mickey, why the hell did you leave your keys to your new truck in a, in the freaking car? Ugh, these rookie drivers. Um, we cut to the next day where Grandma Walker's getting the house ready for a special visitor, which Grandpa Walker is clearly not a big fan of. He's trying to hide the whiskey, trying to hide the good plates away, because he knows whoever this guy is, he's not, he's not a good person. And they start kind of having a bickering fight about it. Um, also the Walker siblings are heading to school. They both get stopped by their respective cliques, each asking them if they're going to attend the, um, bonfire, the big, the big teen party, you know, the big luau. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm that old school. Um, the daughter's, the daughter's trying to decline it since, you know, with her trial day coming up for the marijuana possession from episode one, she's trying to be good and trying to stay out of trouble. Um, meanwhile, as for August, I still can't remember the daughter's name for the life of me. Um, he gets approached by a girl who he clearly has a thing for. And, you know, she, he's immediately trying to play it off as a cool guy. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to this party. You know, I'm too cool for it. And then she's like, so you are coming to this party? He's like, yes. It's like, damn, damn, August. You had the cool cred and then you, and you lost it. I am not that surprised on you. Um, uh, we cut back to the station where Mickey's already getting prepared for the, um, the embarrassing flood of comments they're about to flood in for letting her car get stolen on the first week on the job. Captain James goes over the um, what's going on with the whole Toretto case about how, you know, what's going on that she's only in town for like a little bit, a little bit, limited amount of time. So they have to get her now. They also do bring up um, Cordell and Mickey's failure of a stakeout. Um, but the only thing they were able to get out of that night is a piece of surveillance footage that um Documenting um, Toretto's escape with a mysterious shirtless cowboy doing a dance, which Walker immediately points out. And he knows who this is, but we don't get to know that yet. So they split off. Walker returns home. He gets um, Metal Gear solided by some other guy, which turns out to be the shirtless cowboy dude with a shirt on, thankfully. Um, the two engage in a brief um, game of stealth. Cordell manages to get the upper hand on him. And once he realizes who he is, Cordell's still like, what are you doing here, man? Why are you here? And Hoyt's like, oh, come on, man. Oh, also his name is Hoyt, by the way. He's like, come on, man. We're best buddies. You should be welcoming to, to your fine abode. Um, turns out Grandma Walker invited him. Um, so she's all happy that he's back because he used to be a childhood friend of Cordell's back in the day. So we then cut over to them having dinner. Which is very tense. On the left side, they're all happy that he's here. On the right side, everyone's hating the fact that he's here. Um, while, while they're all enjoying a good piece of Wagyu steak, which I never had before, but I swear to God, I want to have one. Um, the conversation gets veered to the point where um, even Grandpa Walker can't even take more of the BS that uh, Hoyt's put, putting out. Uh, meanwhile, Mickey is um, on the search for a truck. She manages to get the location, which is very close by to Walker's house because obviously Hoyt's the one who stole it. So I believe from there, yeah, so she's about to go in, but um, Grandpa Walker stops her, um, putting a gun in, her, gun in her head, preparing to shoot. She clarifies that she's a Texas Ranger and also Cordell's partner, so they immediately drop the formalities and just go straight to, hey, you want to just drink some whiskey and just eat some Wagyu? Um, which they do, and it seems like they have a very good vibe off each other. Like They could be good like drinking buddies. So this is a very a, definitely a very good sign that you know Mickey's going to be around a lot longer in the Walker family. Um, but during this conversation, Mickey tries to get more information about Hoyt, Hoyt. Grandpa Walker fills her in that, um, he is a, he was Cordell's childhood friend growing up. They played football together. They spent so many, so much of their formidable young years together. Um, but of course, court dates put up in two different directions. Um, um, Walker went up to the path of law enforcement and he went, Hoyt went up to the path of breaking the law enforcement. I know, bad joke, I'm just saying. Uh, this is my second go around, okay? I, all my good jokes went away after the first go around, okay? Give me some slack. Um, so then, me went back at the house. Um, Hoyt tries to give um, Walker's daughter some legal advice, quote-unquote, 
uh, about what to do in front of a judge, even though that every time he's been in front of a judge, apparently he's went to jail several times. So he's not the right person to be giving this advice. Um, so, but then the night is ended with some weird hot picante challenge, which is, you know what? We're only three episodes in. I already seen male strippers. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go for this. Let's do this. Um, the night ends. Um, Hoyt makes plans with grandma Walker to go mushroom hunting in a couple of days. Um, he and Cor- Cor- um, Walker have like a little quick one-on-one about, about things going on, Cordell's hope, hopeful that he's not involved in the Toretto business, and he does. And Hoyt doesn't deny he's not a part of it, but he's not also confirming it. Um, definitely indicating that this whole banter between the two of them is going to hit a point at some point where it's going to be uncrossable. Even Cordell's basically warning him, like, once I get something on you, you're going down. I'm taking you down. And Hoyt's like, not not if you can catch me. So definitely playing the whole um, cat and mouse game there. Um, and then I believe... The next day, um, Cordell and Hoyt hang out for a bit. They head over to this, like, storage place, and it turns out to hold Emily's car, which at some point in the past, Emily lost the car, and now Hoyt got it back, so now it's closer by to the family again. We we also get another flashback where um, Walker and, um, and Emily are heading to the bar. They see Hoyt from a distance. They're about to, they're going to participate in, in another poker game with him. And even though Hoyt's had a history of cheating, um, they need something to bet on since they're broke and they have a baby on the way. So yeah, this takes place pre um, their daughter being born, or this was like just around their conce- the conception period. So yeah, so they gotta have to be responsible adults and start like thinking about a future for their kids. So yeah, so yeah, so they head over to um, the bar so that he can meet Jerry and propose to her. Well, re meet. Reunite with Jerry and propose with her. Uh, she's not buying it. She's already had enough of his BS. So, um, yeah, so it's not not really a good time for Hoyt, or he's just striking out this week. Um, they engage in a play um, in a game of cards, remembering the good times. You know, just t- chatting like old friends. You know, also especially when Emily was around back in the day. Um, so they're having fun. Meanwhile, Mickey tries to get some more information about um, from Captain um, James about the current um, situation. She also tells him about Hoyt, and he's like, yeah, I know everything about Hoyt, that he's basically uncatchable. There's no usable evidence against him. He can always get away from the law. And every time he's Cordell's involved in a matter with him, he tries to stay around him just to be his friend, but he's always writing it off as just being like a undercover um, reasoning. But um, sometimes he maybe he doesn't know in this matter like what line to cross in terms of like um, staying within the lines or crossing that line. And hopefully, um, James recommends uh, Mickey to be the one to like kind of reel him back in. So we, we, we then cut to Mickey going to the bar to confront them, um, meeting Jerry for the first time, as well as, you know, seeing Hoyt. She manages to get Hoyt on a technicality after he supposedly bribes her with a beer. So um, she uses that against him to at least hold him in jail for at least 24 hours, just in case. Um, at the police station, Cord- um, Walker tries to talk down um, to... Mickey about Mickey. maybe he's not part of the thing. Maybe so. This is not all. This is not all necessary. But until Mickey takes into the interrogation room, room, and at first he doesn't budge, but then he eventually kind of gives up some location to where Toretta might be hi- hiding. Meanwhile, the kids are at the bonfire, um, and the brother um, August is not. He is not alcohol savvy because this man's dancing all over the place. He's trying to impress these girls. He's basically, you know, he's a wild man. And his sister's looking at him and it's like, he, she's just, she's just knowing he doesn't belong here. He, he doesn't. Um, so then I believe that, 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 I think we cut back to, yeah. So the um, Walker, Mickey, James, and some of the other, um, people of their department, they go off to try and, um, apprehend Corda, um, not Corda, um, to, uh, apprehend, um, Toretto, Toretto. And, um, they head inside the, in, inside the place. The only thing in there was just the, uh, the Emily's car and then, Nothing else. There's a, there's a note there from Hoyt reading that, hey, look, this was always Emily's car. Now it's yours again. So uh, pieces. That's basically the, the gist of the letter. I, I just summarized it for you just to save you a minute of talking. Um, we cut back to the bonfire where um, I'm going to drink some tea. My, my mouth is killing me. Sorry about that. Um, it's already nighttime. The um, August is already becoming blackout drunk. He's saying some stuff like that. Um, 
the daughter, um, Walker's daughter, his sister, um, um, he's thinking that all she's doing is trying to just pull, push dad away again. And, you know, she said it's not like that. And before Aukus can say anything more, he just pukes like a baby. He just throws up everyone on the floor. I'm like, yeah, it's time for him to go home. Um, they try calling Walker, but he's busy with the case. So they call in um, Uncle Liam, who is already on, uh, on the town shopping with his boyfriend. Um, so once he gets word of this and having to pick up the kids, his boyfriend is not entirely a fan of this since he's always... Um, Liam's always bailing um, the kids out of him. They maybe they should deal with their own problems for once. But once Liam mentions the fact that August is drunk, um, the boyfriend's like, "Let's go! Like we need to go. I want to see this." And like, damn. So much for them priorities. They go to pick them up. Um, at first, it seemed like a stern talking to, but then you know Liam just switches to the cool uncle mode, just like you know, kind of gives him a slap on the wrist and starts singing with everyone. It's like, damn. This is honestly not a bad family. Um, then I don't know how like Walker and Mickey are just talking about like where Liam could be. No, not, not Liam. I'm already confused with the names. Damn, with um, with Hoyt, and the, I, and then I believe Walker somehow figures out where they could be. Uh, meanwhile, Grandma Walker gets a call from Hoyt that um, he's gonna have to cancel their mushroom trip because he he knows it's almost the jig is almost up. He's either about to leave town because after a successful job or he's about to be arrested. So he's already telling her goodbye. And meanwhile, he's getting ready to move out with the boys for um, Toretto's job. Uh, but it sadly stopped as um, Walker and the others show up to arrest them. Um, but however, Hoyt manages to somehow get, give them the slip. Um, she, he's about to escape in Mickey's car again. But this time, Mickey conveniently remembers that the um, these newer cars have apps so you can stop them in their tracks. Which is a fairly useful feature that I wish my car had. And so they managed to finally get him once and for all. Uh, Mickey also finishes the story on how back when we were starting with the um, the beginning of the episode when the two were getting to know each other, she was mentioning that she had this friend back when she was younger that um, kind of steered into the path of being a criminal, and then eventually he got caught and busted, which is kind of how um, how um, um, how now Hoyt is being is being sent off. So kind of just pointing on how things are head, heading 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 into. Um, so then next day. Um, the um the Walker daughter, uh, manages to uh, is getting not manages is getting ready for her trial for her case. Um, Walker's about to give him a ride. She also rats on hit on her brother that um oh hey you know August got drunk last night, and Walker's is like playing it off it's like oh yeah you know what come on sleepyhead come on come along with us. Um so they head up to the trial to the courthouse to um await the to do the trial. Mickey goes over to Jerry's bar to talk to her about, you know, to give her the um, the bar tap that um, Hoyt owed her as well as the pseudo engagement ring he was about to give her. And th- these two, like, have a very nice back and forth going. Like, I'm very satisfied with this. And I can't wait to see what more they're going to do with these two characters in the next few weeks or in throughout the rest of the first season. Um, we head back from the courthouse. Um, turns out the fine, she has to pay a fine. Um, she has to do hundred hours of community service and her license is susp- suspended for a while. And Walker just be, is get, be, being the more realistic adult here and saying like, look, what you've been, what you've done is done. Now you have to learn to live with it, accept it and move on as well as you you are paying me back for that fine payment. Um, so then they head off in the car, supp- supposedly heading home, but then, uh, Cordell uses this as an opportunity to not only teach his, her do- his daughter how to drive a stick a stick car, but also to, to have his son just run besides them while they're driving in order to teach him a lesson like don't under underage drink, or at least like you know this is like a good way to get off a hangover or something. I really don't know what the context was here, but um, the episode ends with like um Walker and his daughter just laughing and bonding over this whole experience while the, the son is just slumping in the background like oh man. This show's cool. But, um, yeah, anyway, I really did enjoy this episode. I really did dig it. Um, I think this was a really great um, point for um, Cordell in terms of, like, rebuilding his connection with his son and daughter, kind of accepting, you know, where things stand with his um, with his past, his growing friendship with Mickey, which I'm really appreciating. They're putting more effort into this. The first two episodes definitely set up this, set it up, and then now we're now that we're past the whole Emily that thing now we can start moving on to um Cordell um figuring out his life in that post Emily world and yeah I really like the fact they're inserting making more of the Walker family stuff you know her meeting Grandpa Walker and um 
yeah so and, and you know um and and also meeting jerry and getting that dynamic going like i, I really did think and i can't wait to see one more they're going to bring that up in the next few weeks um so yeah I, i'm really excited for that um but yeah for me i give this episode two thumb two thumbs up yeah sorry this would usually be the, the moment where you just see my two thumbs up and um, i can't do that right now so i apologize sorry about that but um or was I? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think that's going to do it for me. I think I covered all my bases this week again. So if you're unaware, this has been what's in the, what's in the two reviewing every episode in the wall in Walker's first season. Cause I can probably say that now. Um, if, if you want to know what we're doing overall, what's in the two besides our Walker episode reviews, um, we're doing every rookie season three episode reviewed. Um, we're reviewing all those episodes in the rookie season three, each and every Monday morning after a brand new episode on Sunday nights on ABC, then on on Hulu the next day. Um, that's usually what the Monday show would be, but since um, Rookie's on break because of Super Bowl Sunday, because we all know there's no way any show can compete with Super Bowl Sunday, um, this Monday we're going to do a quick impressions on Lost. And just letting you know, my opinions are very divisive on that, so stay tuned for that. As well as um, we do Nancy Drew season two episode reviews each and every Thursday mornings after a brand new episode on Wednesday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app and on the CW.com. Um, but if you only care about Walker, you're, we're in, you're in luck. We'll be back next week, Friday morning for another episode review. And yes, hopefully by then I will be back on camera, back to normal. I apologize. I just did not want to get my, my setup back in order again. I do that throughout the episode. I'm not doing that again. Um, so yeah, but until then, again, if you're unaware, this has been What's On 2 from ActionX. If you want to see more of us, please subscribe to ActionX on YouTube.com slash ActionX. Ring the bell for notification when our next episode review is live for Walker, which is every Friday morning. As well as like, favorite, share this episode review if you want to. But it does help us get us out there to new people who have yet to discover us. Grow, up, grow us even more. And, and it's all for free. And also, yeah, follow us on Twitter to be up to date on any updates for the channel. Follow us on Twitch for streaming. And for all you Texas Rangers out there, um, again, thank you for for um, indulging me this week with the whole um, issue with the with the with the audio. But um, I'll see you guys next week uh, on camera. But until then, be safe out there. Be good to each other. And peace out.